What's up lovely people, Sam here from Samyara's Den and today we're going to be exploring a simple sado bread recipe. What is sado anyway? Sado is a naturally leavened bread which does not use your commercial yeasts to rise. Instead, it uses something called a starter, which we have over here which is nothing but a mixture of flour and water that has been fermented over time to cultivate a strain of wild yeast and good bacteria, which is really healthy for your gut. We've been cultivating this little strain of starter over here since March 2020, and we actually nicknamed our little pet Bubbles because it is a pet. It is a living and breathing colony of wild yeast and good bacteria and you need to keep feeding it frequently. We actually started off with a all-purpose flour starter, but around two months in, we actually converted it to a whole wheat starter. So this one over here is a complete whole wheat starter that we've been cultivating for quite some time now. Now, one of the reasons we started baking sardo bread at home was it was the pandemic that struck in March 2020 and most of the countries around the world went into lockdown, including India. There was a scare in the market, people were panic buying and we weren't finding a lot of things on the shelves uh, in grocery stores. So whenever we could procure large enough batches of flour, we figured we might as well start baking bread. But here's the catch. There was actually a yeast shortage in the market around the time of the pandemic pushing countries into lockdown. And we simply couldn't find baker's yeast anywhere. So what could we do to make bread? And after reading online about ideas on how to do it, a lot of folks recommended using baking soda or baking powder to make bread, but it just wasn't cutting it for us. So that's when we discovered a simple recipe to make sado bread. Of course, sado bread requires a starter, which requires a fair amount of time to cultivate. So after a couple of trial and errors, we did come up with a stable strain that took us about eight days to build a good enough strength. And then we were able to make our first sado loaf, which wasn't that great to be honest, but it was a really good start. And let me tell you this, ever since we started baking our own sado bread, we have not bought commercial store-bought bread at all. Anyway, so let's jump into the recipe I have over here. It's four simple ingredients. You have your flour, you have your water, you've got your salt, and you've got your sado starter over here. Now, what I've got over here is a combination of whole wheat flour and all-purpose flour. Hopefully you can see the difference in the color and texture of the flours in this bowl. And um, what I've also got over here is some vital wheat gluten that I've weighed out uh, to match the proportion of flour I have. And adding this to this essentially makes this a really good bread flour, which works extremely well for the sardo bread that we're gonna be making today. Every time you make sardo bread, you need to have an active starter. And what that really means is you have to feed it and you have to watch it rise up. And when it's nice and bubbly, as you can see in this jar over here, it's ready to be used in your um, sardo bread recipes. Diliara actually fed the starter earlier today, about seven-ish hours ago. So let's rewind and take a look at what she did. Hi there. So Deliara here, and today we are feeding the starter, which is basically the first step in making your sourdough bread. If we look at it theoretically, it's actually very, very, very simple. You just need to combine your starter with water and with flour. In our case, we are using whole wheat sourdough starter, whole wheat flour and water. And the ratio in which you are going to combine is one to one to one. And today we are going to combine 150 grams of whole wheat starter, 150 grams of water and 150 grams of whole wheat flour. Let's go. Telling the truth, mixing all of it together is the most tedious job. Just believe me. It's 
So while you are combining the sourdough starter in the preparation of your sourdough bread, make sure that there are no lumps of flour left in the starter, that everything is combined into peanut butter consistency. Our starter is ready to activate. Let me just keep the rubber band so that you can see how much it's going to grow. I think it will require about five, six hours for it to activate completely, but we are in Hyderabad, don't forget that. And I'm going to loosely keep just the cap or the lid on this jar. Just make sure that your jar lid is not kept tight on the jar, because as the sourdough starter ferments, it creates the gas inside the jar. And if there is anything tight, it's going to explode. We don't want our jar to crack, right? Now that our starter is mixed, we'll keep it to activate and we will see you in a couple of hours. All right, I'm back over here and I hope you all enjoyed that lovely video of feeding the starter that Dilyara did. Coming back to our recipe over here. All right, I'm gonna uh, switch on my uh, kitchen scale over here. I've already weighed most of these things out except for the starter and the water. Uh, so this is gonna help me make sure that my calculations are accurate. Okay, so I've got about 450 grams of flour in this bowl, and I'm gonna put it all into this. So now we've got 450 grams of flour in the bowl over here. To this, I'm gonna add the vital wheat gluten powder. This is about 16 grams. It's a little more than what I'd usually add for all-purpose flour. The reason I'm adding a little extra is because we're using uh, whole wheat flour as well over here. So the extra gluten powder helps build better structure to your dough. That's my vital wheat gluten in there, along with my flour. I'm just gonna give it a little mix up. Now, if you watch other videos on making sourdough bread, a lot of folks would avoid adding salt in with the sourdough starter, but I haven't found any real difference while doing that. I always get a really good bake uh, over there, so I'm just gonna toss my salt in over here. I've got 10 grams of salt that I'm adding for a single loaf of bread over here. Let's give that a toss. Next thing I'm gonna do is add my water and my starter. The amount of water you need for 450 grams of flour is roughly around 280 grams of water, but uh, if you wanna have a higher hydration, you can always go with 300 or 320. Just remember, that's gonna be a really wet dough, and if you're not comfortable handling a very wet dough, um, it's better off for you to start off with a lower hydration, like a 50% or a 60% hydration. All right, so I'm gonna be adding 280 grams of water to this. I've got my kitchen scale set to zero. That's 234. 60, 275, that's 295. I overshot that a little bit, that's okay. And the last thing I'm gonna do is add my sado starter. So I'm gonna reset this to zero. Now the amount of sado starter you need for this recipe that we're using is roughly 125 grams. You can overshoot it or undershoot it a little bit, that's okay. As long as you get roughly around 125 grams in there, that's good. So reset to zero and let's pop in 125 grams of sado starter. Look at how nice and ripe it is over here. All right, so we've got our four basic ingredients over here. We've got our bread flour, we've got our water, 
we've got our sado starter and we've got our salt. So I'm now going to pop this onto the stand mixer. Lock that in place. Attach the dough hook. And I'm going to attach the spill proof lid. Let's see how efficient it really is. All right, we've got everything ready over here. Let's start kneading. One of the challenges we've had with the Inalsa stand mixer is the top head actually moves around quite a bit. It wobbles around quite a bit when you're working with dough. So I'm just gonna hold it down and see if I can use it. And that was the first speed setting, by the way. So I really wish that it was slower than what it is right now. All right, so after using the stand mixer to knead it, we have a decent dough over here, but um, I'm a stickler for kneading by hand, so I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a knead with my hand, and I'm actually gonna transfer it into another bowl. Okay, so we have our dough over here. I'm just gonna squeeze it around. And place it in this bowl. We're gonna cover it up and let it proof for about two hours. And we're in Hyderabad, so things proof really fast over here, especially because it's summer right about now. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, so the bread's been proofing for about two hours now. And now it's time for us to start the next stage of our process of making sardo bread, which is the stretch and fold. Essentially what we're gonna do now is we're gonna stretch the dough over itself four times, for four times in 15 minute intervals. Now we're gonna do the first stretch and fold. Here's our lovely dough that's been proofing for the last two hours. We have this little spray filled with drinking water and I just spray some water over my palm and then it helps the dough not to stick. Look at how stretchy that is. And you stretch and fold your dough over. So that's one, two, three and four all right so this is the first stretch and fold i'm just gonna cover this back up and we're gonna let it rest for about 15 minutes and then we're gonna do the next stretch and fold and we're back now for the second stretch and fold Gonna let it rest for another 15 minutes. And we're on to round three of stretch and fold. All right, one more round to go. So now it's time for our fourth and final stretch and fold. But before we do that, I'm gonna prepare this proofing basket with the same cloth that I used to cover this actually. So let me put this aside and bring the proofing basket over here. Now remember, you don't need to use a proofing basket specifically. You can use any other bowl for the longest time. Before we got this, 
we were using these ceramic bowls and you can use any medium sized bowl in your kitchen. I'm taking the tea towel and pressing it in over here. What I'm gonna do next is give it a little dusting with some flour. This is just your regular all-purpose flour over here. Be generous with your dusting over here, especially if you're working with high hydration flour, the moisture from it tends to get into the cloth. So you don't want that to stick. For the last stretch and fold, I'm actually gonna turn this over onto the uh, platform over here. So I'm just gonna give this little dust. Let's bring this out. Look at that. Now remember, with sardo, it doesn't rise as much as baker's yeast. It's a very slow fermentation process. So, so be patient. That's my advice to you. The last stretch and fold. Let's take this over. And then I'm just gonna plop this across and bring it together. It's gonna take a while for you to practice, you know, shaping your dough. But um, I found this to be one of the most effective methods to bring some tension across the surface of the loaf. Once you have that enough, you can then flip it over, bring your proofing basket, plop it in. And don't worry about any uneven marks over there. That's all gonna fill out, dust it up nicely. And then you're ready to proof your bread for the final proof. And you have two options over here. One is you could leave it out again for another hour or two to proof, depending on how hot the weather is or how warm it is outside. Uh, you could get away with just two hours, but if you're living in a colder country or the ambient temperature is, let's say, under 20 degrees Celsius, you'd probably want to let it proof for at least three to four hours at the very least. The other alternative you have is to do an overnight proof in your refrigerator. It's one of our personal favorites, so we plan it out for the entire day. And by the time we reach the evening, uh, we shape and pop it into the fridge overnight. Anywhere between 8 to 12 hours of overnight proofing in your refrigerator. And then the next morning we take them out and prepare them and toss them into the oven. So yeah, we're gonna overnight proof this one and we'll see you in the morning. Now we've been proofing the bread overnight for about 9 hours and uh, we're finally ready to put this into the oven. I've already preheated the Dutch oven and it's been preheating for about 15 minutes now. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna prep the bread onto this parchment paper that I've got over here, score it so that we can pop it into the oven. So what you've gotta look for is press and see if it comes up but doesn't fully come up. If it does that, then you know that your bread is properly proofed. If you press it in and it stays over there, it's not fully done or it's overproofed, or if you press it in and it springs all the way back up, then it's not fully done either. Just gonna lightly spray this to keep some moisture over there. And then we're gonna flip this onto the parchment paper. Look at that pretty lines on it. I'm just gonna give it one single score over there. Now, don't be shy of cutting your bread too deep. It's always good to give it a nice deep score. That way it helps open up in your uh, oven while it's baking. So I'm just gonna give it one score. So you see that? And then I can give it a little design over here if I want. Let's put some lines. Let's see if I can draw some leaves. I'm terrible at scoring. But um, I'm just gonna try anyway. <laughs> okay, you can see the lovely air pockets that have already formed over there in the inside. Give it a light dusting. 
What this helps do is if you ever carved a design into your bread, it uh, tends to add a little more definition to it as it bakes in the oven. I'm gonna bring the oven over here and we're gonna pop it into the Dutch oven and then we're gonna put it into the oven for 25 minutes to bake with the lid on. And after 25 minutes, we're gonna take the lid off of the Dutch oven and let it bake for another 25 minutes. The first time we bake it for 25 minutes, we bake it at 250 degrees Celsius. And when we take the lid off, we bake it for 200 degrees Celsius. We've had our Dutch oven preheating in the oven for about 250 degrees Celsius. It's been about 15 minutes now. And uh, we're gonna bring that, put this into that, and then bake it for 25 minutes. We're back with our lovely baked bread over here. Look at its beautiful design, the pattern that we have. I'm just gonna take it out of this. I'm gonna place it on the cooling rack over here. Now this has been actually cooling for a bit, so it's easy to hold by the hand, but when you take it out for the first time from the oven, please don't touch it with your hands. Use oven mitts. I hope you can hear that beautiful sound and lovely crunch over there. So it's still warm. I'm gonna let it cool over here for about an hour or two before we cut into it. So um, see you in a bit. At long last, our sado bread is now ready. It's been cooling for the last two odd hours and we can now cut into it and see how it looks on the inside. You can see the lovely texture on this. Look at that beauty. Let's cut into it. Now, one of the reasons you end up with smaller pockets over here is because we are using whole wheat flour. Uh, a significant amount of it, uh, rather than just all-purpose flour or white flour. I can't wait to taste this. I'm actually gonna cut a small piece and try it out and see how it is. This little one, let's have a taste. Hmm. It's nice and crunchy on the outside and soft on the inside. You see how soft this bread is over here? It's got the right hint of saltiness to it as well. So, honestly, I could enjoy this as a snack by itself. Um, and one of the things I love about sado bread is how versatile it is. You know, you can have it for breakfast, you can have it for lunch as a side with say a salad or a curry, or you can even have it for dinner. The other thing I like about sado bread is it's got an unusually long shelf life. If you keep it at room temperature, it's gonna last you at least a week uh, before it goes stale. But if you store it in the fridge, you can store it for at least two to three weeks uh, without it going bad. And if you store it in the freezer, it can last you at least two to three months. All you need to do is heat it up in the microwave and you're gonna have some delicious soft sado bread ready to eat. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video on making sado bread. Um, in terms of timing, it's always good if you plan ahead. It is a slow and time consuming process, but it's really simple to do. All you need to do is have a little patience and plan your day around the various activities that are involved. And lastly, don't forget to cool down your bread before cutting into it. Because if you cut into it when it's hot, you know, all of that moisture inside is gonna escape really quickly. And not only will you end up with a slightly soggy um, bread when you cut into it early, but it'll also dry out much quicker than it typically would. And um, 
yeah, it's not gonna be the nicest texture that you're gonna be left with. If you have any questions, feel free to drop in your comments in the comment section below and we'll be happy to help you out in your journey of making sado bread. If you live in Hyderabad and you'd like a little bit of our starter, do reach out to us and we'll be happy to give you some for free. If you liked our video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And we'll be back with a lot more videos about recipes and everyday things. I'm Sam from Samyara's Den. Cheerio.